This fall, we're celebrating 85 years here at this location for Weaver's Orchard. And we're just excited to share a little bit of our history with you. Oddly enough, the story of our Pennsylvania farm really begins in Delaware. Around the turn of the 20th century, a Mennonite couple named Jacob and Lizzie Weaver owned a 135-acre farm in Lebanon, Delaware, near the banks of the St. Jones River. It was on this farm that Jacob and Lizzie's 12 children grew up, learned from their parents' example of hard work and innovation, and eventually encountered a series of tragedies that would change their lives. Through it all, they saw God's faithful care. Many of the details from those early years come to us from Mary Weaver Stoltzfus, Jacob and Lizzie Weaver's daughter. At the age of 71, she wrote her autobiography titled God's Care for an Orphan. This is a true story of God's care for an orphan. In all that is written, we see God's protecting hand. My father was a man with good management and really made things move. He built a packing house for apples in the middle, he built an elevator to put the apples in the cool concrete basement. He made his own concrete blocks with sand from the St. Jones River nearby in Delaware. Father planted trees by the hundreds and had five acres of grapes. He also grew asparagus, strawberries, and tomatoes to make money to buy more trees, which were a whole five cents apiece. One chilly day in early March 1918, Jacob Weaver had been working in the orchard all day trimming grapes. I can still see him standing on the end of the porch, looking at the orchard that evening. As a child, I wondered what he was looking at. After supper that evening, Jacob became very ill. Lizzie called the doctor, but nothing could be done. Jacob died of a heart attack that evening, leaving behind his wife and 11 children, with a 12th on the way. Those cold March days I will never forget. We were so sad. We were left without a supporter, a father, but God never forsakes his own. Lizzie Weaver took over managing the farm while pregnant. Mary saw her crying many times. That November, Lizzie welcomed a daughter Elizabeth and her spirits lifted. But 1918 was to hold more tragedy for the Weaver family and for many families across the world. In 1918, a flu pandemic swept across the world and left around 550,000 people dead in the United States alone. The winter of 1918 was unforgettable. The flu was so bad that the churches, schools, and many businesses were closed, and many people died. Three of Jacob and Lizzie's sons caught the flu. Busy caring for her children in their illness, Lizzie put off caring for her own health. Soon she grew ill herself, not with the flu, but with gallstones. She had to travel by train to a hospital in Wilmington for a gallbladder operation. Sadly, three days after the surgery, she died of complications. The children drove in a big Buick to Pennsylvania, where their mother could be buried in the Mennonite Cemetery beside their father. The only child who was not there was their brother Henry, who was in Illinois at the time and could not be reached. Henry said he had a feeling he was needed at home. He started out for home with an old car the whole way from Illinois, and he had all sorts of trouble along the way. God led Henry to stop at the Lancaster Railroad Station to wash up before driving on to Delaware. In God's providence, there we met Henry, while myself and my siblings were waiting for the train that carried our dear mother's body. It was wonderful we could all be together through that tough time. When Daniel was older, he took an adventurous trip west with friends, working for farms along the route to finance their journey. When Daniel returned to Morgantown area in 1932, he purchased the property that was to become Weaver's Orchard and married a young woman named Sadie Kanagi, who had grown up in an Amish family. Like his father, Daniel planted many fruit trees, berries, and vegetables. He marketed the produce by the truckload on street corners in the city of Reading. At the time, this was known as a huckster root, which meant he was a type of produce peddler common in those days. Soon, however, Daniel started selling fruit from the farm. One of Daniel and Sadie's three children, their son Alan, became a partner in the operation. Alan married Miriam Mast and raised four children on the farm. 
The business continued to grow as the Weaver family sold the produce through farmers markets and on the farm. I'm Alan's son, Ed, the third generation here at Weaver's Orchard. And I have many, many great memories growing up here at the orchard. I learned the, the art, the science of growing fruit from my father and, and grandfather, worked right alongside them for many years. And also working with my, my grandmother, my mother in marketing. I have great uh, memories of uh, attending the uh, farmer's market at Shillington and working alongside my grandmother and uh, built many great relationships there. And that's one of the precious uh, uh, parts of, of uh, this type of operation of uh, building relationships with your customers. In 1981, I married Ann and we were blessed to have four children, two boys and two girls. Uh, the oldest of which, uh, Justin, is now our production manager and part of our management team. I'm very thankful for the managers that we have and as the business has grown, it's been an important part. Two of our daughters also work in uh, the business, uh, Kim and Janelle, and it's just been uh, fantastic to be able to uh, be a part of this uh, family business, working together as a team, along with many, many other great people. Yeah, I'm Justin. I would be the fourth generation of the Weavers here, and I have lots of memories from growing up on the farm. Just working with all the family. I, I remember going different places like the produce auction with my grandfather and, and my uncle Park and um, going to market when we used to go to the Shillington Farmer's Market. From a very young age I like to run around the orchard and tag along with a lot of the employees. I probably drove many of them crazy. I remember that when I was about six or seven, I played soccer for a couple of years. And when it came time, when I was about eight, to sign up again for another year, I didn't want to because I felt like I always missed so much happening around the farm when I was away at soccer practice or in a game, even though that was a very small portion of time. So. That was the end of my soccer playing days. Uh, but that's just uh, an example of how much I enjoy being around the farm. So now I get to raise my kids here on the farm. And uh, that's really exciting to have them around and for them to be able to enjoy uh, being out here. It's really exciting to me to know that there is another generation that may be interested in the farm. They've still got a lot of years to go, but uh, you know that really uh, that really keeps it interesting for me, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we can continue on for many more generations. <laughs>